I can't do a full review of Cyberpunk 1997. It's filled with so many things I just don't personally enjoy. I don't like cover-based shooting, or constant long drawn-out dialogue sections, or big worlds of running around doing whatever, or looter-shooter mechanics of inventories full of duplicates of guns. It's very hard for me to enjoy those things. So if I come here saying it's bad just because I don't like it, I don't think that's fair. That's why I'm never going to do a video about Dark Souls on this channel. I don't like Dark Souls because it's full of stuff I don't like. I would never call Dark Souls a bad game, I just don't enjoy it. We can't all enjoy everything, and I rarely want to declare that a game is straight up bad unless it's something like Alien Isolation. But I know that Cyberpunk is one of the biggest games of our generation, and I'm going to get asked what I think about it for months, so I gotta say something. This is not a review. If you want an in-depth review, I'm actually going to do the unthinkable and recommend Skill Up. His review goes over the whole game pretty well, showcasing its positives and its flaws. If that's what you want, you can get it there. First, I'll admit that I'm not a fan of the Witcher series. I'm not into the world of those games, or the combat system, and I'm not a big fan of open world games in general. I have my exceptions, specifically the classic GTA games and Red Dead Redemption. I'm not fundamentally opposed to games with a lot of story and dialogue as their priority either, but it's difficult to find games that I feel do it right, or at least do it in a way that keeps me interested. I don't know where to start, so I'll start with the beginning. The first hour of the game is incredibly slow. It takes 45 minutes for something to actually happen, and that something is a short gunfight. The game takes a very long time to get started. Hours, actually. It was over six hours for me to reach the end of the prologue. I don't mind the length necessarily, but I'm already kind of bored of the world. The art style is definitely beautiful, and the city is well designed. It's just that every store, every business, every apartment, inside and out, uses the same color palette. They all have the same neon colored lights. This is an issue I have with the general idea of cyberpunk. A punk rock kid stands out in a crowd. When everyone and everything is punk rock, it stops being cool and instead becomes commonplace and you get numb to it. Moving on to the RPG mechanics, the skill tree offers some good upgrades, and some meh upgrades. I wanted to invest in some cool hacking skills and weapon damage, but Cyberpunk locks off basic gameplay mechanics that should be available at the start. You can't sprint while reloading, which is a basic user-friendly mechanic that adds to the smoothness of combat. There's no reason to lock this away. Just the fact that you can change it with perk points is an acknowledgement that this sucks. It's not an upgrade. Damage modifiers, health regeneration, stamina boost, hacking skills, these are upgrades. Unlocking the ability to run while in combat is simply a way to make things less annoying. It's a problem that the game created for itself that you have to resolve by spending points. I don't hold the opinion that any possible thing being locked away can be justified by saying, well, it's an RPG. There's a line. Can you imagine if for the first hours of the game you couldn't run more than four seconds without your stamina depleting? That would be really annoying, right? Would it then be excusable if you could eventually unlock the ability to run longer? No, it wouldn't. That's a bullshit restriction they put on the player that they charge you to remove. I feel the same way about sprinting and reloading during shooting combat. If this were something you could unlock from the beginning, it wouldn't be a problem. But you have to raise your body skill level to 11 to be able to unlock it, which takes hours. So while I would like to have spent points on cool upgrades and abilities, instead I had to spend the first 6 hours of this game getting enough skill points to raise my skill level on the body category to then be able to spend the perk points on the ability to sprint while reloading. Unbelievable, unacceptable. A little less destiny please and a little more prey. It's actually depressing to be 15 hours into this game and then see an upgrade you want like increased damage to headshots by 50% and then realize you'll have to level up that category from level 4 to 11 before you can buy it, which will take what, another 4 hours? And that's if I'm not investing in any other categories during that time. The progression is so slow and incremental that it's hard to get excited about purchasing upgrades. The combat in this game is mediocre at best. I don't think the guns feel very satisfying. They're like lesser Borderlands guns. Enemies don't always react to being shot. Enemies will take 6 or 7 direct shots to the head and be fine, and then they'll shoot you once and leave you dying. You can mitigate these issues with eventual upgrades and combinations of hacking skills and stacks that multiply damage, defense, speed, but it certainly doesn't do the early game any favors. You can't raise the field of view above 100, which is pretty crap. There also seems to be an issue with the input buffering where sometimes you'll be pressing a grenade or switching weapons and the command just doesn't respond, which is something that can get you killed. 
To complement these bad aspects of combat is the bad AI. Worse than Titanfall 2 AI. Enemies that just stand there like morons. Laughably stupid enemies. Stupid enemies that aren't fun to fight. Seriously, some of the combat encounters in this game are downright embarrassing. But it's cover-based shooting, so what can you really expect? You'll probably have more fun if you go the stealth route. Combat isn't the main focus of Cyberpunk, obviously. If it were, it would be a much bigger problem. This is a game about being in Night City, driving around and immersing yourself in this world, steering cars that all control awkwardly, running over civilians and alerting the police just for the police to totally forget about you within seconds. Very immersive stuff. Night City, for as beautifully designed as it is, is populated by the most miserable, insufferable assholes since the Ghostbusters remake. Everyone here is scowling, staring angrily, cursing, arguing, it's just depressing. I don't enjoy being in this place or talking to anyone, be they store owners, side characters, or people in the main quest. They're all one-dimensional, ultra-serious, and always trying to talk real cool, man. My character V was always quite the prick, with his discount Batman voice and I'm the baddest mofo around attitude. I hated listening to him talk. And you'll be talking a lot. This game is full of talking, which is fine. I get that this is an action light story based RPG. I'm down for an experience of talking to characters and interacting with a story. The problem is that everyone you talk to is so drab and dull and one note. And so many of these conversations go on and on with dialogue choices that largely feel arbitrary and meaningless. It's not clear at all how some of these yellow choices might or might not affect something because so many are generally worded in the same attitude, which leads me to the worst part of this game, the nagging characters. In a game where your choices are supposed to influence the story and relationships between characters, you'd think the game would want to encourage you to think about your decisions. However, any character you talk to starts harassing you if you take more than 5 seconds to think about what you want to say. Every time I had 3 or 4 choices presented to me, I'd think, okay, let's see what these say and how they might impact things. And as I'm reading option 3, the character is yelling at me to hurry up and answer them. This happens over and over and over and over and over. To the point where I just said, fuck it, fine, I'll just press F to say the first dialogue choice to shut you up. Okay, uh, yeah, F. Just answered your own question about where Evelyn is. Long gone. God, I hate V. Why do you believe she could help you remove the chip? Does a corporation help her? No idea. Think so, yeah. Don't think so, no. And asking too many questions. <laughs> okay. V? Shut up! Give me five seconds to read the dialogue options. Fine, just F, whatever. It's the most stunning case of a game sabotaging itself that I've ever seen. Like if you were playing Contra, but every time you shoot your gun, it explodes in your face and you die. How the hell do you make a game where you want the player to consider the effects of their dialogue options, but also nag them constantly for taking a few seconds to read the options and think about them? It's stunning that this design decision made it past the first phase of testing. Man, I want to do something today. Sure, man. What do you want to do? Want to go to the movies? Maybe get some food? We can call a friend and play some games? Hmm, well, maybe... Mayo, can you answer me? Uh, sorry, fine. Uh, a movie, yeah? Nice. Well, according to the website, the next show wins are for Jackson's Revenge 2, The Revenge. Hmm. Paranormal Activities, plural. It's a new franchise, apparently. Oh. And the Johnny Box Spray movie. What do you want to see? All right, I remember hearing something. Mayo, are you listening? Dude, what the fuck? So, Cyberpunk makes me hate the characters of this world, hate choosing dialogue options, and hate my own character. You end up in conversation after conversation of endless rambling from miserable pricks yelling at you for not talking fast enough, and you'll eventually just want to mash the F button to get to the end. I got bored by the main story missions pretty fast, and decided to take the advice of many reviewers and fans and spend time in the side quests. That's apparently where the good stuff is. My first side mission had me sitting on a couch listening to a mother and other strangers at a funeral eulogizing a man that I didn't like. That was great. Then I had to drive across town and pick up a thing from someone. Then I had to go pick up another thing. Then I had to go over here and shoot a couple guys. Then I had to get in a fist fight with two bald dudes using the terrible boxing combat. 
I never care about any mission that I'm completing. I pull up the list of side quests and I just think, man, I don't want to do any of these. Your phone rings and it says press T to answer the phone. I don't want to answer the phone. Too bad, the phone automatically answers for you and you have no choice. So why tell me to press T to answer the phone if I can't ignore it? I can't take this anymore. If you like this game, I'm happy for you. But I'm tired of this structure of game. Answer the phone, accept a mission, drive to this place, do the thing, report back, collect your reward. It's stale to me at this point. Cyberpunk feels like it's built on dated GTA open world design and I just can't get into it. And by the way, the characters in the old GTA games had oceans more charisma and personality than the miserable sacks of shit in Cyberpunk. There's cool stuff here in the art design and the skill trees and hacking abilities. I get it. I get it. I don't care about the bugs. They can fix the bugs. That's the least of the problems. So this isn't a review of the game. This is just a video answering the question of, Hey Mayo, did you like Cyberpunk? No. No, I didn't. As I progressed through the game, certain aspects like the combat became more tolerable, but I can't say it became enjoyable. And for a game largely focused on story and dialogue, I find their implementation to be severely lacking. I enjoyed a couple missions where I took a stealth approach, mixing hacking abilities with quiet assassinations. That was alright, I guess. I won't be finishing this game, because I don't want to. I've honestly seen enough. I'm not going to put another 40 hours into a game that I'm not enjoying. I'm sure there are cool things to discover later in the game, but at this point it's just not worth it. Thanks for watching, I know this video is probably a bit of a disappointment. I would like to have done an in-depth analysis of this game, but it's not something I like enough to study that deeply, and it's not something I hate enough to obsessively analyze. Like and subscribe and all that, and I'll see you in the next video. By the way, this company could be facing lawsuits very soon over their deceptive marketing of the quality of the console versions, especially since they only allowed reviewers to review the PC version and hid the disastrous state of the console game from the public. I hope something is done and some heads deserve to roll. I remember hearing something. Mayo, but... are you listening? What the fuck, dude? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're gonna be here all night. <laughs>